And now I sit here and wait for uh, people to actually come into the stream, because right now there's nobody here but me. Yay. <sighs> Buzzbutt, what do you think you're doing? Oak. Okay. Well, like I said, this will be uh, waiting on people to come in. Uh, you're actually not showing up as being in the audience. In fact, nobody is. I'm not even getting in audience numbers. That's kind of bizarre. Let me see what happens if I hit F5 and refresh. Is is there anyone here that can, you know, say anything in the in the, in the live chat? Okay, it's saying zero people, zero. Yay. I really don't want to get too started before I get people in here because too much of it's going to be just basic explanation of what tonight's going to be. Aha, here we go, Deacon. Hey, Onrag. Do you mind, Fuzzbutt? Put that down. Yes, you. That seems you. That's one of my cats. I have three people in here. Okay. Well... Since it was requested that we make a deep one this week, that's actually going to give me opportunity to show how I do several different aspects of making these figures. Excuse me. How I use blend shapes to make the overall form and you know shape of the of the base figure. How I make conforming items. That's things that follow the anatomy of the creature even when you bend and move. And for the teeth, props, because teeth don't bend and move. And then I'll be able to just, you know, show how I normally go about sculpting. Hey, it works. Okay, we got five people in here now. I guess I can go ahead and get started on the very basic basics of how this works. Okay, so let's go ahead and shift over to Daz Studio. I said this last time, I'm going to say it again. I created this geometry here strictly for making miniatures. That's why it's got such unusual proportions. And for what we're going to be about to do, it's going to need even more bizarre proportions. Now, one of the things that we get with this figure is in the way that things are rigged in Daz Studio is you can adjust the proportions, the shape, and even the size with a single dial turn. Not all of them change proportions and such, for example, if you just want to be more muscular. But a lot of them, in fact, most of these, do. Even the elf is slightly taller, narrower shoulders, 
you know, longer legs. And of course, the, the reptilian actually goes and changes the legs into triple jointed legs. Now, let's drop this down. And what's this? Uh, now, the next thing to do is we need to make the actual basic shape of the deep ones. Now, how we're going to do this is first we look at the proportions, the bone widths. And from what I can see, I used to think that deep ones were, what's the word, um, digitigrade legs. But from everything I've read and seen and all the previews, they're not. They're plantigrade like humans. Plantigrade to, to basically means their foot is flat on the ground. Digitigrade, they walk on the ball of the foot with the toes touching the ground. That'd be like a dog leg. And it's kind of hard to do with a hand because it's the opposite end of the body. But you see what I'm saying. Instead of being, you know, thigh, shin, foot, it's thigh, shin, pastern, toes. But, fortunately, they're not digitigrade from almost any reference I could find. And so, we're going to make them plantigrade. As an example of other plantigrade creatures, bears are plantigrade, and lizards and frogs are plantigrade. Now, the way we're going to handle this is we're going to go ahead and expand all of the body parts. These are all of the selectable body parts. And the first thing we're going to do, they tend to have shorter legs than humans. So we're going to shorten them on the Y scale. Yes, I know those of you who do a lot of 3D printing, that doesn't sound right because Z goes up and down. Well, in Daz Studio, Y goes up and down, Z goes in and out, and X is left and right. So basically Y and Z have swapped places. They've, it's flipped. Now, we've made the legs a little bit shorter. Drop it to the ground. And then we're going to make the feet a little bit longer, but that's going to be in the Z scale. And a little bit shorter in the Y scale, because they're going to be flat. Let me drop it down again. Then we're going to take the toes. In the base figure, these toes look like boot toes or shoe toes. So we're going to have to widen them. That's going to be in X scale. So that the feet end up looking more like flippers when we are finally done with them. They also have a wider hip than humans. So we're going to make the hip wide and make the torso a little wider. Let's try and blend it in a bit and considerably wider this way. The next thing is they have a shorter chest in the Y, you know, not as high, but a much higher abdomen. Their torso tends to bend forward quite a bit. and their neck forward and their head uh, be up like that. Now we want to rotate the collars because they still stand with their arms in the sa roughly the same positions. But the thing is their upper torsos are narrower on side to side than a normal human's. Their hip to waist, or sorry, their hip to shoulder is not as angled. It's more rectangular. And then we take the head and all of its subparts. 
it is not quite as wide on the X. It's actually slightly narrower, like a fish head. But it's much taller and much longer. Okay, we can bring that X scale back. Oh, wrong way. Yeah, I don't think it's that flat. X scale 100. Now, it might be a little too tall in the Y. Yeah. Now, this looks nothing like a deep one. Oh, also, we need to make the fingers and th let's make the fingers and thumb longer. Selecting them all. Oh, wait, that's right. The thumb scales in a different direction. So we got to select just the fingers and make them longer. And then the thumbs and make them longer. Now that is our basic proportions we're going to start working from. I think we probably need to bend the abdomen back a bit. Just to make sure we get everything as balanced as possible. And that's too much. We want it to be flat. There we go. So now we are getting ready to sculpt this into the basic shape for a deep one. But what we got to do first is I've got a couple things turned on here that make makes it look a little bit nicer. One is mesh smoothing, which you really don't see in its default pose. It's only when it starts bending that you really see it. And the other is the mesh resolution. This is the wireframe of the geometry. You can see where each polygon is at this point. When we turn on high resolution, it smooths it all out. And you can see that there's actually a second set of polygons. And if we bring it up even more, there's now eight, and it's even smoother. But the problem is, when I'm making a morph, like I was, like I made for dwarves and orcs and such, I don't care about the resolution. Because when you make a morph, what it's doing is it's moving the individual vertexes, the points where all of these lines meet. For example, it doesn't remember, take the form of a dwarf, it remembers take this vertex and move it in this direction this far. So the result has to have exactly the same number of vertexes as the base figure here. So let's turn it back, turn off the uh, wireframe. And now file, export, and I'm going to save it just simply as deep one to the directory that I keep everything. Next thing is going to be actually bringing it into ZBrush to get it ready. So, um, where is, there it is. Let's turn on the ZBrush window. Yeah, that star is basically generic polymesh. Poly we are going to import going to take a couple moments, pardon me, the deep one shape. Oh, and look, and there it is. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm going to do the head pretty much last. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust this torso because it looks just wrong. In order to do that, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to hit X which turns on symmetry. With X off, I move this and it only moves that. With X on, it moves it symmetrically. Whee! 
Okay. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to make the cursor a little bit smaller. I'm going to start dragging down just the upper torso, just the upper abdomen. I'm then going to smooth it a little bit, and I've got to smooth it. Whoop! I'm going to smooth it just a little bit, just enough to blend it in a little. I'm also going to pretty much smooth away the abdominal muscles simply because, well, not only do deep ones not have the same kind of abdominal muscles as humans, they don't exactly have high um, muscular definition. Increase just a little bit, yeah. Now, the next thing to do is to inflate that belly. Get in that belly! So by just making it a little bit bellier, now we do something similar with the back, because that back is too human. Let's go ahead and move to, back to move. Shrink just a little bit and move the back this kind of a way. We're also going to make it more of a hunched back. So we make it even bigger and we pull out the back a bit. Because most of the images of deep ones that I've seen have kind of hunched backs. Now, that's the torso pretty much done. Well, no, the bottom of the rib cage over here kind of needs to be smoothed out a bit. Just to blend it Move down a little. Yeah, there we go. The torso of, of the deep ones. Yay. Now, deep ones also tend to be portrayed with slightly larger thighs. Not hugely so, but mostly on the outside of the hip. Not so much. Oh, not that big. Not that big. Enough for the frog-like jumps that they are, or poses that they're often given. By the same token, their ankles are usually thinner. Let's move this up, zoom in. The problem with making the ankles thinner is that it would then make it more difficult on the miniature itself to sit right. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and work on the feet by moving and stretching the shapes. Now we cannot make the individual toes that would be visible. What we can do is we can even out the surface of the foot. That way when it comes time to actually do the feet we can do so on the higher resolution version. That's probably good enough. The same thing goes, most of the rest of the body is fine for now. That head though, we have to fix that head. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to move out the back of the head, try and smooth it out even with the neck. Bring back of the head up a bit and bring the neck up and out and then we're going to smooth out that section right there. 
we need to get rid of those ears because they don't have ears. What a shock. Fish don't have ears. So as I smooth, it actually gets rid of those ears. Make it smaller and focus more in on this part. And it blends away. Zoom out. That's also how I got rid of the ears in the reptilian. And we zoom in because when we zoom in and we can focus more on just these areas that need it, we can get rid of the entirety. Yay. No ears. But we need to make this better. We need to fill in the back of the head and the neck. So we go back to move. Make it big. And we're going to grab here and stretch it out a bit. And grab here and stretch out this way. We're also going to make the neck a little bit thicker at the base. The reason being is because the neck really tends to blend into the shoulders more than it does on a human. And we smooth it out a bit just to get it more even. There. We have our basic head and neck positioning. We need to make the head itself better. Because deep ones don't have human heads. Yes, what I'm doing is, uh, well, that depends. What I'm doing will be able to be brought back in, because if you notice, I'm not changing the polygon count in this. I'm just shaping it. So I can take this in, back into Daz Studio, where I will show you how I convert it into a, me into a morph. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to pull back this part of the head, because we're going to be making it into... big old wall eyes. Now we've got to get rid of that nose. So, we shrink the arrow again, and we start smoothing away the nose. Now we have, a, once again, have those little points where, come on, don't do that. I don't want to look at the chest. Have these little points where they've got a higher resolution, so they need the smaller smooth. It's starting to take shape. Not yet, but it's starting to. Now, let's make the move brush bigger again, and we bring the head back, the top of the head. And the and let's smooth that a little bit. Now we're going to move the mouth. And it's already starting to look more fish-like, isn't it? Now we're going to need to, once again, smooth away the ears here. Because by doing what we've done, we have just brought that geometry there back into prominence. So, erase the ears. Now, the eyes, we don't need perfect sphere eyes because they're not going to be moving in what we're doing. However, we do need, whoop, we do need these eyes 
to at least be vaguely spherical. Okay, now... Oh, too much. See, anytime we do too much, we need to tweak what we've done. Like right now, we've got a wrinkle above the mouth that it doesn't need. And now one of the biggest problems it's still got is it's got a chin. And I don't know about you, but I've never seen a pointy chin on a fish before. So we're going to zoom in and smooth away, just erase that chin. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to make that lower lip a little bit bigger. The reason being is because at the scale we're going to be working with, the lip as it was would not show up well 3D printed. So by making it bigger, it's more likely to show up on a print. At least on an FDM print. And it's frame. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit more moving just to get things in proportion for where they need to be. For example, you can see up here, that needs to be moved in a little bit. Smooth that out. We can also move this up and back. creating the entire back of the head where gills would be and where we're going to sculpt them on in the final version. And then finally, the back of those arms kind of needs to be moved a bit, mostly because of, again, how the, how the internal structure of a creature like this would look. We're going to make the back of the arms a little bit bigger. Frame. Now, that is a very basic, kind of stub, kind of chubby, deep one. If we were going to make something a little bit larger scaled, it wouldn't be anywhere near as chubby. The arms and legs would be a lot thinner. But this is mostly just to get across the meaning more than being entirely accurate. Oh, there's a spot we need to smooth just a little bit. Okay. Now... We're going to go ahead. Now we export this back out as Deep One. And it saves. And that's all we're going to do in Daz Studio, or in ZBrush for now, because we're going back to Daz Studio. Right here. Now, here's how we handle making those uh, blend shapes. First thing we do is we go back to our high resolution and turn mesh smoothing back on and then edit figure zero figure take it back to a human okay we're back to a normal human the next part I'm going to be showing is actually not going to be uh, visible because I can't get it to show up in XSplit. So what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to show you screen captures of the uh, dialogue as I actually use it. First is a dialogue called Morph Loader Pro. That's right here. And what Morph Loader Pro does is it allows me to go ahead. I click on Choose Morph Files. I click on the deep one. And then I end up with a what you kind of similar 
to what you see here, although what you're seeing is for the orc, where it says reverse deformations, I say yes. What that means is there's already a morph active on our uh, human there, and that's a morph that hides a, 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 a messed up attempt at teeth. That's hidden. And it's also been lifted off the ground slightly. And then property group, which normally starts off saying morphs slash morph loader. I change that to races. I click accept and it goes to loading morphs, loading deep one, created morph successfully. And I can go ahead and close that picture. So now we go to the races. Yes, we're going to the races, guys. And here we have a new dial. And you'll notice that where the other ones start off completely to what would be my left is it and then can go all the way over to to the right this one starts in the middle we don't ever want to do a negative deep one because you want to know what that looks like that's a negative deep one we don't want a negative deep one do you so instead we go ahead parameter settings and we set the minimum to zero there we go and now when we troll over we have a deep one and yes, it does end up slightly shorter than a human being. Now, do you know what would happen if I tried to move the arm right now? Anyone? And down to three as, as people are just leaving because they don't want to see this. Well, right now, if I tried to move the arm, let's select the left shoulder. Let's bend it up and down. That does not look right, does it? Deacon? Anyone? Hello? So... Yeah... The problem is, the rigging is dependent upon a series of what are called bones. And these bones become visible when I click on this tool up here. Now, as you can see, if I go back to human, the bones fit into the figure properly, right where you would expect those body parts to be jointed. You know, the collar joints here for movement like this. The upper arm joints here for movement like this. The elbow joins here. But when I turn on the deep one, it moves away from the bones. We don't want this. So instead, what we do is we go in here and then we right click. You can't see this menu, sadly. There's an edit option, adjust rigging to shape. It opens up a dialog box, and I click OK. Oh, look, they just jump down so that now it works to the point where when I click on the mouth and I go to open that mouth, ah, the mouth opens properly. If I raise the arm, it moves from the from the proper point of the joint the problem now is that when I sh go back to human uh oh I've left the joints behind so I have to freeze these I go to what's called a property hierarchy and here we have the deep one property I I right click it I, call, I click on what's called ERC Freeze. And what we see at that point is this dialog box. This dialog box shows everything that is modified by that particular dial. And do we want to freeze it so that it actually moves with that dial? We go ahead and we click 
accept. And the end result is now that when I turn it off, the bones go back to what they were. Now we don't need to see the bones anymore. We have our base deep one and we need to save this. Do you know why? Because if I didn't save this, if I only use this morph for this video, I would never again be able to make exactly that style of deep one in a different pose. But now that it's a morph from my base figure, if I save that morph, then I'm good. I can make more deep ones. So we go to File, Save As, Support Asset, Morph Assets, and I get yours, and I make sure to check the checkbox next to Deep One, Accept. And now, from now on, whenever I restart and load this figure, one of the options will be Deep One. And if I do it partially, we start having Innsmouth Syndrome. Bigger eyes, longer face, slightly more hunched look, slightly pinheaded compared to a human. Yeah. 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 So now we have our basic deep one. So, since you were the one that requested this, what suggestions do you have for the basic pose that we should put this guy in? If you really want to, go ahead and post a link to a, uh, to a suggested reference image type into this chat. Okay, we'll wait on you. Yes, that's how long of a uh, 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 lag I'm getting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting old. Yeah, yeah, I freely admit it. Okay, let's click on this link and let's see what we get. Okay, so you, well... He's not going to be quite in that pose because, like I said, I've made them plantigrade instead of digitigrade. But so he's kind of turning, raising one arm, and looking up and to the left. Okay. So the first thing we do is we go ahead oh, and let's put him into a basic standing pose to start. I have a basic standing pose here. Now, this is a standing deep one. We're going to have him stepping forward a little. Now I can either do it by using this tool, which is kind of a universal rotate. And movement tool. <coughs> Actually, let's start off by bending the hip forward. Because again, you never want the hip in a hundred and a perfect parallel state to anything. Not the ground, not the shoulder, nothing. Let's bring the leg forward a little bit more. And side to side a little. and we bend the knee a bit more. 
and let's twist the leg just a little simply because that yeah need to make it a little bit straighter now the leg really the human leg does not bend backwards very far in reality not much more than about there unless you've like mastered the splits and then we bend that bend a toe forward. Now the problem with doing that is it won't stand on a miniature a miniature base. So let's bring it back forward a bit and bend the more and let's twist that. Now let's view from the right view so we can see are they parallel? No they are not. So let's bend the foot forward a bit and then twist the toes. Let's hit D to drop. We're gonna okay the we need to bend the foot just a little bit more. So bend that toes down. There we go. Perspective view. Now, the torso and the chest are going usually, unless you've got a rather unusual situation, the abdomen and the chest tend to bend together either exactly the same or directly opposite of each other. It's rare that you'll have them be partially the same and partially against each other. Twist. Side to side. No. Side to side the other way, but bend forward. The neck, however, will bend up. Side to side this way. And let's move this arm forward. Twist. We're going to unbend it a bit. Now let's take a look at that picture again. Okay, so let's bring the arm out just a little bit more. So we're going to bring it out a little bit more. Bring this arm up and twist it forward and then bend the forearm. And now let's grab the head, and we're going to go, I'm not going to go side to side, we're going to go twist. And then let's bend the thumb a bit. The problem with the thumb is that it will be hard, it will be hard to print unless we can get it up to, you know, where the rest of the hand is. So, let's bend the, bend the thumb tip in a bit. Now let's go ahead and we're going to symmetry just the thumb. Make sure to undo these. The thumb's tucked in. Now, that is the basic shape for what you're wanting me to make, right? That's the basic shape before we get into sculpting anything else. 
there's a problem with this for 3D printing, uh, Unreg, and I'm certain you can tell me what that problem is, besides me having the hiccups and pinning little kitty. And while you type it out, I'm getting some sodi. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful with these things. What is wrong with this figure for 3D printing a miniature? Exactly. It's not a very friendly print. Hey, Baloo! Well, the base comes last. But the problem is that arm especially the lower arm this arm here won't need as much support but this arm will need a whole lot of support so we got to figure out how to make it better my suggestion let's go ahead and lower it and unbend that forearm And now, for one, there's a lot more open space of the torso visible for, the, for when it comes time, both to sculpt and to print. And you'll only need, really need supports along this part of the arm. So it's not going to be as difficult to print. From a geometric standpoint, it is slightly, slightly off balance. If this was a running pose, off balance is fine. This is not a running pose. This is a standing pose. So what we need to do is we need to pin these feet and select the hip. And we're going to move it to the side slightly so that the weight is over the center of the feet. Yeah, there we go. The feet form a line directly underneath the center of the body weight. However, we now have another problem. By doing that, we have unbalanced that one foot. So we need to go ahead and unpin it. And we're going to first move it down. Then we're going to bend it a little. Set a little. And then we're going to side to side it. And there we go. I got that got that fixed back to a perspective view and that is our basic deep one pose So we're going to take this we're going to make sure that we've got it mesh resolutions are on high and all that and we're going to export it no 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 we're not we need to do two more things we need to open that mouth we need to open that mouth and we need to put down this cat. Oh, you are a crazy, crazy furball. Yes, this is my assistant for the night. This is Carlton. You can tell because he has no collar, and he's rolling over in my arms. What are you doing, Fuzzbutt? You're gonna have to go down. You're going on the floor. Okay. Let go of the shirt. I gotta put you down. There you go. Now, opening his mouth, I realize he's missing something. And that something is teeth. We also need to make the make the eyes angry. 
I can do that in the sculpt or I can do that right here. So uh, no, it doesn't work as well when the head's sideways. When the eyebrows are sideways, they don't tend to rotate as well. So we'll di we will take care of the expression. But we need to make those teeth. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to save this pose. File, save as, pose preset. Deep one stand. We're going to accept that. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to zero the figure. Okay. Turn it back into a deep one. And then we're going to open the mouth a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to export this. Export. And we're going to take it into my broadcast miniatures, but into a working folder. Teeth base, we'll call it. And we're going to switch from that to 3D Studio Max. Yes, I have all of these programs open at once on a seven-year-old computer. Yeah! If I suddenly vanish, my computer has exploded. So what we're going to do is File, Import, and I'm going to pull up that uh, base model and import and here we have the basic fish man and yes he came out as pink wires don't ask me why they assign a random and let's make it object color. The other thing we're going to do is we are going to freeze this model. Now, we're going to make the teeth. We start off, we look, and we see that it's actually moderately long. What we're going to do is we're going to create a box. That's about how big the teeth are going to be. And I'm going to stretch it out. I am then going to turn it into what's called an edible poly. I am going to make a duplicate. Well, first I'm going to select these polygons, invert, and now I've got the cap selected. Delete it. I'm now going to mirror it. Copy. And I'm going to attach the two together and weld them together so that there's four. We're going to hide this, hide Mr. Fishy. This is what's going to eventually be our teethies. Now the problem is these teethies are flat and straight. They don't need to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these vertexes pull it out then I'm going to select each of these let's there's not going to be as many teeth as on a real world thingy because there's there's just no way that's going to happen so one, two three there's going to be basically four teethies on the side now what we do is we bend it yep we just bent it and collapse all. Now we need to know how much what next to do so we bring this back up and now we scale it this way until it fits inside the mouth and oh look it does. It fits inside the mouth. 
but again we now have the problem that teeth aren't supposed to be evenly long so we're going to rotate it a little bit actually no let's do it a better way I'm going to select these vertexes and we're going to what's called skew and I'm gonna keep trying until I find the appropriate direction to skew there we go I'm gonna collapse and we're going to bring it in and we're gonna hide Mr. S Mr. Fishy Mr. Fishy we're also going to make the outside of the teeth smaller because of how we're going to make the teeth themselves now we're going to select all those polygons and then we're going to erase all the ones here so that the only ones we have left now selected are the ones on the outside and we're going to do an extrusion and we're going to extrude by polygon that's way too far let me bring them back in just a bit and click OK and now we're going to scale it down next step is we're going to select all of those and we're going to loop and then we're going to actually we got to select this too loop and we're going to sharpen those we're going to do what's called a chamfer at point zero zero one what that does is that gives a permanent edge on them and speaking of permanent edge we need to make TV sharp so we're going to select the tops of these oh wait no that's wrong we're going to select we're going to, we got to go underneath and then select what will be the tops of the teeth now because of that chamfer between them they're not physically connected as you can see here so when we extrude them we don't want to extrude by polygon we want to extrude by group and we're not going to go very high and then we're going to shrink it and finally we're going to select all of the sideways uh, edges. We're going to click connect and we're going to slide that up until it's near the top. Now, make fishy visible again. Mesh smooth. One, two layers. And we have our fishy teeth that are still a little bit too wide so it's good and shrink them a little bit more actually let's do it in a different way FFD basically it's a box select those and bring them in actually we only need these and then let's bring it back a little and collapse that is our top teethies now we need to go ahead and mirror them vertically and we bring those down to here and re-rotate them 
and these will be our bottom teethies. But what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and move them further in the mouth and shrink them just a bit so that when the mouth is closed, they don't fully penetrate each other. And that's our deep one, sharp, long, deep sea, fishy teeth. So I export them one by one because those are going to attach to the head. The bottom ones are going to attach to the jaw. File, export selected, and I'm going to save them to that same directory that I just made where it's the working folder for broadcast miniatures as an object file. Top teeth, export, file, export, oh, nope, 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 don't want that, file, export, did, bottom teeth, there, and now that I've done that, we can go ahead and go back to Dash Studio. Now, the first things first, we're going to go ahead and import them. Import top teeth. I'll explain why you don't see them in a second. File, import, bottom teeth. Now the bottom teeth, you can see. The top teeth, we can't because sometimes the surfaces from, DASD, from 3D Studio Max come in with a 0% opacity. And an ambient color of bright pink for some insane, stupid, god-awful reason. So there we go. White teethies. Now, notice that they already look meaner in here than they did in 3D Studio Max. We go back to the scene. We take our top teeth and we attach them to the head. Then we take our bottom teeth and attach them to the jaw. Now what happens when we have the jaw selected and we go to open and close it again. Now yes, you don't want to load in the teeth when you have the mouth closed all the way. but they follow the jaw. So now just for the sake of saving these, we're going to go ahead, zoom in on them, file, save as prop, figure and prop. We're going to call these deep one top teeth mini at and then this one file save as support asset figure prop assets deep one bottom teeth and now they're in our content library right here. Now we go back to the figure, we go back to poses, and we have the deep one standing with his teeth. Now you'll notice there's a huge hollow inside that mouth. That's not going to print well really. It's going to make the teeth just kind of fall. We'll deal with that in a second. Now what we do is go ahead and make our teeth invisible. File, and we're going to export this back to Broadcast Miniatures as Deep One Posed. Accept. Then we're going to make it invisible, make the teeth visible, and we're going to call it File export deep one teethies okay 
All right. The purpose. Oh, and hi, uh, hi, hi, Billy. The purpose of Daz Studio itself is the articulation, the posing, the morphs. The raw geometry is made in 3D Studio Max, or if you don't have Max in Blender or Modo or whatever 3D modeling software you have. Daz Studio is where you articulate it, you pose it, you give it versatility. And then once you've done all of that, that's when you bring it into ZBrush. Now it still has that same fishy guy, look familiar Dunny, from before. We don't have to worry about that. We're going to import the deep one posed. Alrighty. Now we have to add in a sub tool to load in the teeth. So now the next thing to do is it's time to actually start sculpting. We have our base geometry, we have our base pose, we have our teeth in ready. It's time to start turning him into something that looks less than human. <laughs> Unlike almost anything else I've sculpted so far, we don't have to worry about clothes or anything else. What we have to worry about is that back fin. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and first make sure I have X turned off. This is not a symmetrical model. Everything has to be done by hand on this sucker. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to go to standard. Standard is your basic, the basic uh, brush that happens when you start up ZBrush. We're going to give it a bit of a tight focus too. And what we're going to do is we're going to start here and we're going to trace its spine. That's not big enough, so we hit one. As if we've done it again, hit one again, and one again. And that's what we end up with. So let's go ahead and let's smooth, smooth out the top a little bit, just to make it more even. And let's make this a bit more. Okay, and there we have our fin. That was nice and simple. But what we got to do now, we've got to make it so that we can sculpt on it better. So we're going to divide the polygon count until we get to around, yeah, that's about, about there. We're going to delete that, but we need to even out the polygons because, as you see, on the sides of the fin, the polygons are stretched compared to the everywhere else. You can see it rippling. So what we're going to do is we're going to Dynamesh. I love Dynamesh. It's one of the most useful things to as, uh, that ZBrush ever created. And Dynamesh. Now we do it and we see that it's even. All of the squares are even, but we may have made them too big. So we're going to undo that. 256 and a blur of zero. Dynamesh. Now, we're going to have to go back in and fix the eye. Or better yet, let's do the eye and then do this Dynamesh. So what we need is we need a move tool called Move Topological. What that means is if I move the eye, it doesn't move the flesh around it. If I move the eye brow, it doesn't move the eyeball. And we're going to use this to make it angry. Now 
which makes it more evil and creepier. I'm also going to bring the edge over. We now have an angrier, meaner looking deep one. frame. Yeah. Now, let's go ahead and blur of zero, resolution 256, Dynamesh. Alrighty. Ah, yes. Deep One Dentistry. Yes. And ZBrush pretty much is the sculpting place. Okay, I'm up to nine people. I'm doing better. Yay! So let's go ahead and move down. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to smooth out the thin a little bit. And then we're going to create the spines for the thin with inflate. Now we need bigger, simply because this is sculpting for miniatures and not sculpting for art. And and then we smooth this just a bit. then kind of come out here and then just a little bit here then we go ahead and grab the move tool because what we're going to do now is we're going to make it look like a fin and not just like you know going to bring it down and arc it like a fin. Now the next thing we've got to do is we've got to make those a little bit sharper because they will print better if we can, so we're going to grab just the very tip, pull them out a little. And here we have a nicely printable fin on the back of our deep one. And I'm going to grab soda. The next step, whoops, hold on just a second, drop something. The next step is to make the gills. Okay, these gills, the ones on this side of the head will be very hard to see. We'll get to those later. But on this side of the head, we've got a decent amount of geometry, but not enough. We give it one level of subdivision. And then we're going to go back in later and touch up those eyes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use move in an unusual way. We're going to make sure that we're at a slight angle. Grab the neck and move it. Oh, it's not enough. Grab the neck and move it. No, it didn't do it. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to an inflate. And I'm going to shrink it. And we're going to inflate a line. 
and then we're going to move that line Whoop. then we're going to sharpen that line we're going to use slash on an add to sharpen that line make it a little bit stronger that's not strong enough and we're gonna hit one to give it another go and two then we're gonna Z sub and we're gonna do it again but down this way and one two three all right, that's one gill. Now we're going to make the next gill, which is going to be up here. And then we switch to move topological and increase the size. We're going to move this to here. Oh. Now this one doesn't need as much sharpening. And then we're going to add we're going to well first we're going to check to see if we need to change polygons we don't really. So we're going to go ahead and go back to inflate and do the last gill cuz I figure 3 gills is good enough. And we're going to go back to move. And we're going to move this gill and there we have the gills on that side let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger and let's kind of push them in just a little bit closer to the head oh too f just a little bit closer to the head frame now the next thing that we're going to do is well we're going to get to that one at the end we're going to go ahead and add some scales actually no let's go ahead and isolate off those Fins, just the spines, just to make them clear that they are a there's a sharp divide between the spines and the thin. As for the bases of the fins, we're going to give them a little bit of a, a bulge with inflate. And we're going to shrink the inflate just to And then we're going to once again go back to slash and slash here. Make it clear they're coming out of those little bulges. Move. Uh, 
a miniature is almost like visual storytelling. It's not quite as precise, but you want your every everything to be clear on what it is. Just like in visual storytelling, you want your action to be clear. It's like, for example, here you can clearly see those are spines with a fin between them. You can clearly see that those are gills. Now, while we've got this tool selected, we're going to go ahead and re-detail the presence of the eye. Well, we want it actually deeper than that, so we're going to make it more intense. So, for the most part, this is the basic shapes done. Oh, no it's not, because we've got to do knuckles. And I don't mean a hedgehog. Yeah, that's something I actually forgot in the last couple miniatures. I forgot to exaggerate the knuckles. And in the process, straighten out the bones of the fingers. Yes, and now we need to smooth that, so we need to get smooth up all the way. And while we're at it, even though it won't be seen on FDM, it might be seen with hands this size on a resin printer. Let's go ahead and draw in the tendons on the back of the hand. and then smooth gently frame I don't need to make claws on this because the bony hands make them look monstrous enough as it is and then let's draw on knuckles And eh, 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 eh. There's bony landmarks on the entire body. And we've got to make sure that they at least have a, a nod to them. And if they don't, well, it looks soft. And then okay those hands look a lot better now which means it's time to do the opposite it's time to make the feet and we're going to use inflate for this too we're going to draw toes three toes, let's say. Okay, we're going to need to smooth that. Now, it's looking okay. We just draw on those toes. But there's more than that to these critter these critters. First of all, they have rounder heels, so we don't need these flat heels. Let's smooth those just a bit. The fewer 
polygons you're affecting at once with the smooth tool, the more it affects them. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to use that slash tool and we're going to draw in the differences at the toe and then fade back to where the foot is. And this is to try and differentiate those toes a bit more. Then we finally take our move tool. We go from underneath, just to try and keep the feet evenly flat, and we stretch the individual toes out. This gives us more of a claw look to them, more of talons, which yes, they're fishy and froggy, but they but talon feet are always creepier. Frame. That's the feet. That's the gills. And now, besides the base, which is not what's next, can you tell me what is the next thing that I need to work on on this critter? Anyone? Anyone in the audience, what do I need to add to this deep one? Or, if you prefer the Dungeons & Dragons version, this Kuatoa, that I haven't done yet. Hmm? Let me scratch my ears. My ears are getting itchy. That's what happens when you wear large headphones for, you know, about an hour and a half so far. Anyone? It's missing scales. So, what I need to do, I need to go in and I need to add scales, but not all over the body. If I add scales all over the body, the rest of the shape won't read right. It'll look messy, especially when printed on the FDM printer, which won't be able to capture the entirety of the detail. So, Zoom in. Let's put a couple scales on the cheek. But to do this, we're going to need to divide it again. Okay. Subdivision 3 gives us 950,000 polygons. Subdivision 4. 3.8 million polygons. Yes, ZBrush handles that quite easily. And you can see how small those polygons are and those who are who are concerned about this level of polygon you know how how many polygons there are don't worry you see zbrush also has an easy way of decimating and what we're going to do is we're going to load in a new brush this brush is actually going to be one explicitly meant for uh, scales now, it'll take me a few minutes to dig it up because, you know, I've got a large number of things on my drive. ZBrushes, scales, scales fish, open. And what this does, no, I don't like that. Fish one is not good. Load. Fish 2. That's a bit messy. And load brush. Scale, fish scales 3. Or, sorry. Scales fish. Scales fish 2. Scales fish B. What does this do? Okay. 
I don't like that either. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to go back to a inflate brush, and we're going to load in that alpha. Now we're going to open up the alpha control panel over here. And one of the things we're going to see is it has, where is it, the fall off. We're going to increase the fall off. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to change that from to drag dot. And we're going to increase the intensity because that's not enough. We're going to put them on the cheeks just to kind of show some detail. Then we're going to reduce the fall off a bit. And we're going to make the brush a little bit bigger. And put some along the back. Actually, we need to also increase the intensity. And put them on the back. And in this case, on the shoulder. Now, we're going to put some on the chest. Uh, I don't like how it's bouncing around. Control Z. Zoom in. We're going to put them on the chest about here and about here then we're gonna make it a little bit bigger and put them on the butt on the flank Okay, now oh, it's got some scales. And those face scales look way too small to even be seen. So let's go ahead and shrink down. And we're going to smooth those away. And the same thing over here. We're going to turn that fall off up again more. That's noise radius, alpha blur. Zoom out. And we're going to make this big again. And we're going to draw it on. Oh, that's. Onto the face. No. In that direction. Then we're going to blur around the outside edges. We're going to smooth those outside edges just to make it clear that there's others there. These are just the only ones that you can see. Okay, now we have ourselves a nice scaly deep one with nasty feet and, and graspy claws and the teeth are very still, very basic still. So what we need to do, we need to select the teeth. Zoom in on the teeth. And we need to, well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to hide the body. Everyone knows how to hide a body. Yeah, yeah, you just get yourself some uh, cement and you put them on the feet and you dunk them out of the boat a couple miles offshore in international waters, you know. It's just everybody knows how to hide a body. And if for us, it's easier. We just click the little eyeball next to the body. And we're going to smooth out the tops of these teeth because somehow they got pointed to the fronts of the teeth, I should say. And 
Then we're going to go ahead, let's make the body visible again. We're going to subdivide the teeth a couple times. Whoops. We want to select the teeth, not the body. Divide, divide, and delete lower. Now we're going to frame the whole thing. And we've got to add one more thing. We need to append the base. Now, I could give it just an ordinary normal base, like I put on the others. But I've had a special request from the person who requested the deep ones to begin with. And they wanted a very specific base that I have created many moons ago. This base, it is a 26 millimeter base. And it looks like, if it'll load, which might take a few minutes. And while it's loading, I'm gonna put my Wacom tablet up. And there it goes. It looks like a magic circle inscribed into flagstones. Now I've got to take this and I've got to lower it on the on the uh, vertical axis. Just like that studio, this program has Y as the vertical axis. So I set the offset to Y and I start lowering it. Too much. Let's lower one and point it at a time. Now, the next problem is it's not quite centered on the figure. As you can see, he's off to one side. So we're going to try seeing what happens if we offset by Z and then X. Five, negative five, and then we need to offset by X. Now, let's see what happens if we go by 15. Okay, too much, negative five, and we need to Z offset just a little bit more. So let's go negative 10. So, mostly and mostly evenly placed on this stone with a flagstone with a magic circle engraved in it. So, now we go ahead, we go back to our subtool menu, we select our deep one, and we go to merge and we merge down it's always okay to merge down and it and we merge down and what we have now is 17 million polygons oh my god that's not good we don't need that many can any of you think of a slicer that can slice a 17 million polygon anything? Yeah, see, I'm not going to actually modify the... Yeah, the, the polygons... Wait a minute. Yeah, I did forget to do the uh, left gill. The left gill, however, is at a point where I don't think really we're going to be able to do anything more than just a very faint line because it's so bent you know so I'm just gonna draw on a deep slash a couple deep slashes and again we're at a point where I think that a an FDM printer really wouldn't be able to show them 
but a resin printer probably could. All right. Yes, I can hide with parts. So I can get a better view right here. My shoulder again. I'm going to leave the forearms as is simply because they are supposed to be long skinny things. But now we have our 17 million polygon deep one. So what we need to do is we need to make it a lot less than that. The first way we do this also blends the teeth and the base into one. Dynamesh. And we ended with 2.021 million polygons, which is pretty good. Brandon, what I was saying is those side, at miniatures scale, those side gills would be almost invisible. But I just realized there's something else I forgot. So I'm going to have to undo that. Control Z. Yay. I forgot to seal the mouth. Basically what I need to do is I need to put a little ball in the mouth and shape it to fit behind the teeth. So we go back to Subtool, Append, Sphere 3D. Oh, way, that's huge. So we go back to deformation. And we go to size. And we shrink it down a few times. We then offset it by Y first. That's just to make sure we can get the size right. Then, we offset it by Y back down a bit, about the height that we need. Offset it by Z, until it is, and then offset it by X. And then Z again. And then we offset it by Y to bring it back up. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to change the size of everything except Y. Okay, and now and now we get to the point where we can do more good with actually manually manipulating the mesh using the move tool. And what we do is we move it inside the teeth and inside these teeth and, a little bit. and then we grab the top and we pull it behind these teeth. The end result is 
it effectively adds the food inside of the mouth. So let's go ahead and once again we select our deep one, we merge down, and we've added another couple thousand polygons. Now, a blur of zero, resolution of 1024, Dynamesh. I should note that as they are now, those deep ones are going to be a little bit shorter than the average human figure. But you're probably not being able to hear me because I probably paused for a moment with it going haywire doing the calculations. And now we have our critter as one single solid manifold surface. So the next thing we do is we go to Z plugin and decimation master. This is not recommended for anything that's going to be animated because it converts it, things into triangles and nothing but triangles. If there's a small angle, it's more likely to blend it to a single triangle than it is if there's a sharp. So the end result is areas with more detail, like those scales in the cheeks, will get more triangles than areas with less detail like the surface of the belly or the underside of the base. So we click that button. And we wait. are still computing and we have 34,999 triangles or points and 70,079 triangles and as you can see it's got smaller polygons on this on these scales and at the some of the joint bends and at the knuckles and larger polygons on the base but this is our deep one. So let's go ahead and export this. This is going to be simply, let's put into broadcast miniatures as deep one figure. It's being saved as an OBJ file because that's how ZBrush saves files. I will be doing a conversion to an STL before I upload this to the directory for the prints. Now, let's go ahead and let's switch to Craftware. Hmm. Now, Craftware is a slicer. It's my personal favorite slicer. This right here is what I call a cooling tower. I include that in any miniature I slice, simply so that I can 
it's there to, to well, like it says, to, to, to cool. Um, deep one figure. The reason it's there to cool is because just putting a minimum layer time doesn't really help as much as you might think. What ends up happening is the hot end is still right above the figure, right here, still heating up those layers of plastic. By putting the cooling tower here, it's not so much. Now, as for height, this sucker is 31 millimeters tall. That's not bad. That's that's it's it puts him right at your typical 28 millimeter scale miniature. But the cooling tower is 46 millimeters tall. We don't want it that tall. We want it only a little bit taller. So we're going to make it 33 millimeters taller. That way we'll get a slightly more accurate estimate of how long it'll take. But now we also have to worry about supports. And you're about to see one of the reasons I really like craftware, and that's diagonal supports. Oh, wrong way. So I, I select the fingers and I drag them out, and I have a diagonal support that is not touching the rest of the figure, so it doesn't leave any residue on the rest of the figure. The thumb actually needs a slightly separate support because it's a separate piece. Now, the crotch, I'm going to go ahead and put a straight support. The knee, I'm going to go ahead and put a straight support. Almost everything else I do is going to, you know, there's very few are going to be straight supports, mostly because they don't need it. Now, the teeth, these teeth are going to need a support so I drag it out in front. These fingers are going to need support. I drag them out to here. Oh, too far. Let's do what I do with the other one. Let's grab them and drag them just barely out past the base. No, it's looking like the fingers are going to need a straight support. And that covers both the fingertips and the thumb. Good. And then let's give a diagonal support from the butt out to the outside of the base. And then we're going to have a couple couple frame couple supports from the spine. and then the rest of the spine will probably support itself. That should be all the supports I need, but just to be safe, I'm going to add another support for the arm here to come out back here. The reason for that is I've had problems with arms. It didn't have at least one other support. Breaking off and waving around in air. Okay, so that's the supports I've put on this figure. I already have my my settings for slicing prepared. And you can't see them because it's a new window. Don't ask me. It's 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 XSplit. And when I go ahead and click slice, oh look, it's now sliced, and if you'll look up here in the upper right, it actually has my estimated time, uh, estimated length of filament used, and, you know, about how much PLA or ABS it would cost. Now, those PLA and ABS costs are guesstimated, because I don't actually have my expenditures listed. I have a raft underneath the supports only because supports being a very thin walled construction have very little surface area on the bed. And according to this I will use 1.6 meters of filament. Four and a half feet of filament. That's it. Just that much. 
to print both this miniature and the cooling tower that helps the details. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. Broadcast miniatures. Deep one figure dot G code. And that's it. That is how I make the miniature. So, in about 15-20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, I'm going to be adding that deep one to the Director and Thingiverse. Now, here's the thing I forgot to put up. I do have a, uh, a Discord. Um, this Discord link is going in the channel right now. Now, typical rough overview of the settings that I use for this for these miniatures. Number one, I use 0 0.08 layer height. With the motors and that and and the steppers on a CR10, it's best to work in multiples of 0 0.04. And I tried 0 0.06 and actually got worse results than I did with 0 0.08. I also print at about 20 to 25 meters per se or yeah meters per second, and I uh, print with a pretty hefty retraction. I am using a CR10 with Bowden. Uh, my uh, I used three shells, not two, three, and a enough layers to make 1.2 millimeters. The reason for this is, as small as they are, they need to be really, really strong. Yeah, and I am using a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's a standard nozzle that comes on a CR10. That link is my Discord. Now, there's also I'm going to go ahead and pull up my link to my to the uh, Thingiverse folder. For the broadcast sculpts. I really need to get a bot in here that occasionally that occasionally uh, plants these. Now there's only three sculpts in there right now. There is a dwarf in long coat that I made back on Thursday. That's actually the figure for one of the fighter characters in my Saturday D&D game. There is the high elf druid I made last Sunday. And then there is the one I made on my first broadcast which I did not have saved on Twitch. Yay, I forgot. Uh, the crossed sword trainer. Man who's training with crossed swords. Now you'll notice that the crossed sword trainer has a lot more detailed musculature than the uh, deep one that we made today. And that's because he's supposed to. The dwarf in long coat has a nice beard and nice heavy clothing. Well, we didn't need to make clothing for this deep one. So that entire section of making miniatures, we didn't even get into. Today was mostly sculpting the, the morph or the blend shape so that from now on, I can now make a deep one in almost any pose I want. If I wanted to use them as a science fiction alien race, I could stick a blaster gun in their hands and have them running across a battlefield in high-tech armor. If I wanted them to be Kuatoa from D&D, &D, I could stick a trident in their hands or a javelin and have them going ook ook. And I can even, like I showed earlier, put them partially, put that more partially on, maybe enlarge the eyes even more in ZBrush, and put them in normal clothing with a shotgun and be hillbillies that are part of, you know, they worship my Father Dagon and Mother Hydra too. So... Those teeth are now permanently saved. I can load them in whenever I make a deep one with its mouth open. Or possibly other critters that have a similar shape and sized head. 
I might have to move them in and out to fit into those heads, but those teeth are there now. In the same way, I've already made tusks for both half-orc, which is the orc morph at 50%, and full orc. Now, it is 10 o'clock, two hours. Take away about 15 minutes at the beginning and 10 minutes at the end, and in just barely over half, an hour and a half, I've sculpted a deep one from a basic human shape. And he's ready to print. I, If it wasn't for the fact that I've currently got all my USB plugs plugged in, and I can't, you know, pull it out to... What did I put? There it is. I can't pull something out right now in order to... Uh, move it to my micro SD card or even plug it in directly I'd be starting to print right now and that's the way things go so that's fine Billy that is more than fine I'm gonna go ahead and put my glasses on so I can see Now, what's that? Same. Now, does anyone have any ideas on what we could do for next week's show? Anyone? Besides, you know, we all know that Carlton wants a cat man. Ugh. He wants his avatar. Yeah. Okay. But how about Brandon? Nick? Uh, Buzz? Uh, do you mind? Trick to holding a cat. Hold it so that he feels like he can always jump down. And he never will. He'll just start rubbing his head up against you. Oh, I got boatloads of things plugged in currently. I, ah, <laughs> Fuzzbutt, what are you doing? Ah, let's give it a pity. Give him a tummy rub. No. What are you doing? No, you can't have the microphone. No. No, you can't have the microphone. The models in the background... Um, most of the ones back there are actual Transformers. I collect Transformers. The ones on these two shelves here are not post-processed, but they are 3D models. For a while there, I was making miniatures for a planned tabletop war game set in 2145. Giant robots. Elite troops. Tanks. Angels. Demons. What? Yes. Angels, demons, and the minions of Cthulhu against humans and each other. Four-way battle. Armageddon. And humans don't think it's time. Angels and demons think it's due. And the great old ones just want to feed on what's left. And I got a kitty. Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> Baby girl. She's 12 years old. And she's still snuggly and she's still stronger, tougher, and faster than the two males. Anyway. So, we could do a Catman. We could do a rogue we could do something science fiction I do have blaster parts we could do a modern day vigilante we could do a superhero we could do almost any miniature you could think of although critters take a lot longer because first I have to model the geometry then I have to rig it then I sculpt it Yeah. My cats are very, very affectionate. See? Just headbutt that hand for pettins. Ralph is asleep. You can't see him. He's a black cat asleep over here. Anyway, but yes, I have been running 3D Studio Max, Daz Studio, ZBrush, and Craftware on a seven-year-old computer with Discord and four instances of Firefox, including Twitch. Seven-year-old computer. Yeah. And there's now two people. Two. Oh, ha, 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 ha. two people on my Discord. If you scroll up, there is a link to my Discord up there. It says HTTPS Discord that GG slash X E K V K sixty four. Yeah, etc. Come on, join the Discord. Join the Discord. Meanwhile, I have to refresh Twitch. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing after I sign off is I'm going to be rendering that deep one. To give a basic, you know, overview for those who have not been watching me create it. And then I'm going to be converting it. And putting the STL and OBJ up on Thingiverse in the broadcast thing. Now, it is 10 after 10. In 5 minutes, I'm going to be, I'm going to be saying goodbye, log off, pfft, the whole 9 yards. Before I leave. Is there anyone else that wants to come up with an idea for what I could be making next week? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Here's the next question. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the next question. Should I be playing music? I'm not one for having music on my stream simply because it's 
it's distracting to me. I get lost in, I, I start bopping to the music and get forgetting and all that kind of crazy. Oh, excuse me. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the point two five would help. See this? For five bucks at Big Lots, I got upgraded lighting, so I don't look like neon yellow. See, I'm yellow and backlit, and I look uh, like all sorts of saggy eyed and uh, yeah. But I do this. And I look a good bit healthier. Yes, I still have saggy eyes and sallow skin, but, you know, I don't look quite as old. No music. Okay. Yeah. No music. And... Yes, I use my Muggo can on a regular basis. I use this to cover the can. Because I live in the south, and in the summer, there's gnats everywhere. These are completely and utterly unscripted. I just talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it. So... Well, right now, we don't have any ideas besides Catman. Maybe next week we could do a science fiction Catman, but I really want to stick to something that we, I've already got morphs for on the figure because I've just done one broadcast, this one, that deals with creating an entirely new blend shape onto the figure, creating that deep one. Yes, I can now make any deep one I want now, but we've already done it. Next week, let's try and do something where it focuses more on the clothing, more on the sculpting of the of the, uh, the character than on the creating of the basic shape. So, perhaps next week... Um, well, I should note, nothing copyrighted. I will not make Commander Shepard in Mass Effect armor. I will not make a Warhammer 40k Space Marine. And I will not make... A, a League of Legends champion or an Overwatch hero, unless it is a generic character in the style of. For example, why isn't there a, uh, a, a an Overwatch hero whose primary stick? Yeah, I'm trying to think of something. They got teleporters, they got healers, they got blasters, they got tanks. They got a guy with a sword. They got a robot that prayer beads and dwarf that builds things and gorilla. I don't know. I can't think of something. Well, whatever. This one time in rather dull camp, you. Okay. Anyway, so I will be. I will be, tra be, blah, 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 blah. I will be broadcasting again on Thursday. This time, Thursday is when I make props and tools and things like that. For example, this most recent Thursday, I made a set of Celtic swords for the figures and a pair of Elven-styled hand axes. This Thursday, I'll make whatever comes to mind. I might make some new long swords. I might make a more primitive set of weaponry. I might make a more dwarven looking axe or hammer. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. So Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Time. You know, it's, this as an example, it's 10.15 p.m. Central Time right now. Okay, Sphere so Watcher Prime, you weren't here for the, mo for the majority of the broadcast. This broadcast is about sculpting 3D miniatures for 3D printing. And I finished the product and I'm getting ready to log out. So I am saying goodnight to everybody. And I hope to see you all on Thursday when I will be doing making the props for these miniatures. So, salute.